Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you my review of the 19th mystery in the Nancy Drew series, Nancy Drew, The Haunting of Castle Malloy. As usual, my reviews are based on five separate categories. We have plot, characters, setting and design, entertainment and gameplay value, and music and vibe. Each of those five categories is scored on a scale of 1 to 10 with a final score out of 50, and then I assign a final letter grade to the game based on that score as well. So without further ado, let's get into the plot of Haunting of Castle Malloy. So this mystery takes place in Ireland. Nancy is going to Ireland to be the maid of honor in her friend Kyler Mallory's wedding. Kyler apparently was kind of like a foreign exchange student that stayed with Nancy and her family for a while in River Heights. So she got to be really close with Nancy. Um, she got to be really just close with her family in general. And so Kyler invites Nancy to be her maid of honor when she gets married uh, to her fiance, Matt Simmons, in Ireland. So Nancy arrives in Ireland, and when she gets there... The, her, she gets run off the road by this really creepy-looking, like, white spectral-looking kind of thing. And then when she goes in to talk to Kyler, she finds out that Matt has been missing. Most of the characters assume that um, maybe he's doing this as a practical joke, because apparently he's a pretty big practical joker. Some of the other characters think there might be a more supernatural explanation. And given what Nancy saw, this kind of spectral figure when she first arrived, that's not too far out of the realm of possibility. So Nancy really takes it upon herself to solve this mystery, as she does. So she goes on vacation and ends ends up uh, finding another mystery as she does. That's just kind of how Nancy's life works, apparently. She doesn't go anywhere without discovering a mystery and then deciding that she's going to solve it. And Kyler wants her to solve it anyway. So, win-win. As far as the plot of this story goes, I think overall it's a very solid plot. It's got a really cool historical element, too, because this mystery takes place in a historic castle in Ireland, which is absolutely stunning. But the castle has kind of a dark past. There's rumors um, that the that Kyler's ancestors who used to live there were kind of up to some shady business and the castle at one point actually exploded there was an explosion inside the castle so we have this whole historical subplot that we really want to kind of dig into to help solve the uh, mystery of what's going on in present it's also kind of interesting because Nancy doesn't um, always do these kind of mysterious disappearance cases, but I think they always have kind of just a classic feel to them. You know, we don't know if somebody just disappeared or if they were kidnapped or if they got lost or if they like got really hurt or something like that. So that's also a really fun mystery to uncover. So you have the nice modern mystery, this awesome historical mystery, lots of nice little um, subplots between the characters as well to try and unravel. And I think overall it's very effective. Effective. The one issue that I do have with the plot, uh, which is why I have to take off a couple of points, is because it is a bit of a stretch. Uh, to be fair, to be very fair. Lots of detectives have pointed this out. Um, this game, there are some elements in it that are just not realistic. I would tend to argue that there are many elements in Nancy's life that are not realistic in this entire series. There's a whole lot of things that just... Do, they wouldn't happen in real life. They aren't really uh, that realistic. But this game takes that to a whole other level to a point where I think it stretches things a bit too much and kind of takes a bit of the realism out of the game. Not with any of the supernatural elements or anything like that, but with some of the technological elements. Um, they just seem a little bit off, and it does end up being a little bit distracting in the game. It feels like an easy way to make the game work. One other thing about the plot um, is that it is heavily driven um, by puzzles. Usually I like plots that are a little bit more character driven or a little bit more exploration driven, meaning that Nancy discovers new elements to the story as she goes along and as she's exploring. She'll find out something in a conversation with a suspect. She'll gather clues in an organic kind of way. Whereas in this game, the plot is really, you don't get anywhere without solving these puzzles. Um, and that's not really, it's 
seems kind of like a rigid kind of way to get the plot to move along, less natural and organic. So I do have to take a couple points off for those uh, things. But overall, I think the plot is really fantastic. Um, so if I take all of that into consideration, I give the plot for Haunting of Castle Malloy a solid 8 out of 10. Now let's move on to characters. This is not a huge set of characters. We have uh, four characters that we can talk to in game. We have Kyler Mallory, who Nancy uh, is the maid of honor for and who is the one that invited us to Ireland in the first place. We have Kit Foley, who is Matt's uh, best friend and is in the wedding as well, but not as his best man. We have Denal Delaney, who is kind of a caretaker, I suppose, for the castle. That's kind of his job, and he's been had this job for forever. He's very superstitious. He believes in a lot of old Irish folklore, and he's definitely very Irish. He is the Irish character in the game. Um, and then there is Matt Simmons, um, who uh, we are looking for in this game, and it takes us a while to find him. <laughs> so I don't know that I'd necessarily call him a character. So when we only have those three, three characters it means that we have to have some really rich interaction with them otherwise the characters are going to feel a little bit lacking and unfortunately the interactions that we have with them are not super rich the conversations we have with them are fine and i do like that all of the characters have different opinions on one another you know they're definitely willing to gossip about each other which makes the conversations a little bit juicy you can have fun trying to learn more about the characters through what the other characters say there's always a little bit of controversy a little bit of drama that's a good thing However, the character interaction is really kind of short and to the point. And again, the characters don't really drive the plot along. They drive along their own little subplots in the drama that they have with each other, but they don't drive along the main plot. And so the character interaction feels very lacking. It's also, uh, they're just kind of forgettable. They're kind of boring. When you don't have really deep, rich conversations with the characters, they aren't super memorable. And that makes character interaction seem kind of more like a chore or a bore in this game rather than something to look forward to. I wouldn't say that the character interaction is bad. It's serviceable. It does what it needs to do. Nancy gets to have conversations with these characters. She learns things about them. They do give her information. But it, there's just nothing special about the character interaction or the characters themselves. So overall, I give characters for Haunting of Castle Malloy a 7 out of 10. Next, we move on to setting and design, which considers where the mystery takes place, how well the mystery is designed, both in terms of graphics and then just overall uh, environmental design. And then it also considers how well the setting is incorporated into the overall mystery. So as I mentioned, this mystery takes place in Ireland, and I think they did an amazing job bringing Ireland to life in this game. There is only one Irish character, which I think is kind of funny in most of Nancy's international cases there's only one character that actually represents the nationality where the mystery takes place haunting of castle Malloy is a good example uh, danger by design is a good example there's only one French character um, White Wolf of Icicle Creek is a good example. There's only one Canadian character. I mean, you can go back um, and look at a lot of the international games and you'll see that trend. I, so I don't think it's necessarily in the characters that we get the vibe of Ireland, but it's in the scenery and the location where we get a lot of vibes of Ireland. So there's this amazing pub called the Banshees Inn where you can go and you can uh, mix drinks, you can play pub games, you can play on a Bodron drum, which is apparently like an Irish drum. So that's a really cool influence of Irish culture on the game. The design of Castle Malloy is incredible. I love old castles and the fact that this one has been blown up, it makes it even cooler. And it's been abandoned for years. So when Nancy is walking around, all of the elements that I would want to be there are there. You've got creepy cobwebs. You've got big holes in the wall. You've got these creepy tapestries waving gently in the wind. It's dark outside. We hear creepy wailing. There's sheep running around the fields. And then at some point, Nancy finds this awesome little bog hut. And there's, a, I mean, a bog is super just UK and Irish in general. Um, UK not being a Irish, not Ireland, not being a part of the UK, but you know what I mean. 
just that general island itself. Um, so I think it's just, it all comes together so well in the setting and the design. It's, it's exactly what I would have wanted in a trip to Ireland. It feels like I actually am in Ireland. I do wish, um, that the game could take place during the day so we could see Ireland in the day as well but that's a really minor quip and really nothing that I would take points off for so overall I love the setting and design and I give it a 10 out of 10. Next we move on to entertainment and gameplay about gameplay value bleh, <laughs> which considers how fun the game is to play and how fun it is to replay. Overall I consider this to be a pretty fun game however this is a game that you have to be in the mood for, which is a little bit bothersome to me for a few reasons. Um, the main reason that you have to be in the mood for this game is that it is extremely puzzle heavy. This game and uh, the next game that we play, Ransom of the Seven Ships, I are probably two of the most puzzle-heavy games in the entire series. And there's nothing wrong with having a puzzle-heavy game. In a lot of instances, it can be really fun. I like a good challenge. I want to solve a lot of difficult puzzles. However, in this game, it's it seems like the only thing that we do. You know, Nancy will be working on this really difficult puzzle for 10, 15, 20 minutes. She'll be working on this really hard puzzle. And then she she'll finally solve it. And what does it lead to? Another puzzle. It doesn't lead to an interesting interaction with characters. It doesn't lead us to a new place to explore. It just leads us to another puzzle. So what ends up happening is it feels like a very linear line of puzzle, 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 occasional chore, puzzle, 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 <laughs> occasional interaction, and then just more puzzles. So if you are in the mood for a lot of puzzles, it's a great game. But if you're not, or even if you're like kind of in the mood for puzzles it's just overwhelming and it takes a lot of the enjoyment out of the game especially when you've played the game before because you already know how the game is going to end and so really what you're getting from the game this time around is not um, anything new with the characters or anything new with the setting it's new with the puzzles and trying to complete the puzzles again which I mean it hampers the game somewhat especially in its replay value because it's the puzzles are just so overwhelming if you are a puzzle loving detective you will love this game but I think for most detectives overall in general it's a game you really have to be in the mood for which means I have to knock down the score for entertainment and gameplay value to a 6 out of 10. Next we move on to our final category music and vibe. So I love the music in Haunting of Castle Malloy. It has tons of Irish elements and you can absolutely tell that it was inspired by all Irish culture and Irish music. I love it. It's great. Um, it does a really nice job of conveying kind of the spookiness of the of Castle Malloy but also kind of the kind of the fantasy and the legendary aspect of this castle. Ireland is a really ancient country and there's been um, just so many cool just cultures that have been there for so long and I think you really get a feel for that when the music is playing. We also get a feel for that in the vibe of the game. This is one of the scarier mysteries. It's not, I wouldn't call it one of the scariest mysteries, but it's definitely got some good scare factor to it. And they do a really nice job of not limiting that scare factor to one or two really scary moments. They do a nice job of conveying it throughout the entire game. So for example, when Nancy is walking around the grounds of Castle Malloy, she occasionally will hear like an eerie wailing or an eerie shriek. And that's just, it jars you when you're walking around outside and you think, oh my gosh, is something scary going to happen? Sometimes something scary does happen. Sometimes it doesn't and what I love about that is that it keeps you on your toes so you're constantly having to keep an eye out for things um, which really conveys this nice spooky eerie exciting vibe of the game and that matches in really nicely with the music with the design of the game at night with uh, the characters with the situation it just overall the vibe and the music me meshes together perfectly and I have very few complaints if any. So I give music and vibe a score of 10 out of 10. So if we add up all of our scores, we have an 8 for plot, 7 for characters, 10 for setting and design, 6 for entertainment and gameplay value, and 10 for music and vibe, which gives us a total score of 41 out of 50 and a final letter grade of a B. So now you're probably wondering, 
should I play this game? Should I play Haunting of Castle Malloy? With a grade of a B, I consider this to be a very one of those average games. It is definitely solid. There are a lot of things that I like about it. There are a few things that detract from it, but overall it's a very solid average game. And when I rank the games in terms of my favorites, this one definitely falls somewhere in the middle. It's not one of my favorites, but it's also not one of my least favorites. It's one of those average games. I think it's something where you should definitely play it because, I mean, it's a Nancy Drew game, and come on, we should probably play all of the Nancy Drew games because they're all amazing in their own ways. But I think this is a game that's really going to appeal to detectives that love puzzles and or love Ireland. So I think if either of those apply to you, or if you have an interest in either of those, this is going to be a great game for you. As far as general detectives, I think it's still a fun game to play, and it presents a really nice challenge in a really cool setting with a great vibe to it, and some nice scare factor and it's not like crazy oh my gosh I'm gonna scream my head off scare factor but you might scream which is always a little bit exciting so should you play Haunting of Castle Malloy I would say yes I think it's a good game overall I think it's very solid Thank you so much for watching this review, fellow detectives. I hope you found it interesting and or helpful. I really do enjoy making these reviews. Feel free to leave your thoughts about this game in the comment section down below. I'd be very curious to hear what you think about this game as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.